Welcome back to another episode of Smooth Brain EDH, where we make the smoothest plays with the biggest brains. We've got another CDH video for you all today with all new commanders to the channel. Going first today is Cody on Kenrith, the Return King. Cody has filled this deck to the brim with just about every combo he could think of to play. His opening hand has a Polluted Delta, Howled Fountain, Maze of If, Mana Crypt, Mana Vault, Brain Freeze, and a Red Elemental Blast. Second is Ethan on Krark and Sakashima. This deck is a non-deterministic storm deck, casting his spells to create arbitrarily large amounts of mana and drawing cards by copying spells. He starts the game with the basic Island, Steam Vents, Mox Diamond, Mog Salvage, Twin Flame, Mind's Desire, and his London Mulligan is a Heat Shimmer. Third is Matt Awanoda, Joiner of Forces. This is a Boros Stacks deck that cheats powerful creatures into play through his commander's ability. His opening hand has Cavern of Souls, Jeweled Lotus, Hope of Gearper, Phyrexian Revoker, Goblin Crater Maker, a Blade Historian, and his London Mulligan is Athalia's Lancers. Last in turn order is Cameron, playing Calamax the Stormsire. This team or control deck uses its commander to copy powerful spells and assemble one of its win cons. He starts the game with the Forest, Cephalid Colosseum, Mystic Remora, Nature's Lore, Reap, Chromox, and an Isochron Scepter. We've seen the hands in the decks, now go ahead and leave us a comment on who you hope will come out on top today, and then enjoy the gameplay. As you guys already know, Cody's the one who wins the die roll, and he starts his turn off with a Polluted Delta, fetches with it to find a Volcanic Island, then casts his Mana Crypt and taps his Volcanic Island to cast Mana Vault before passing to Ethan. Definitely not the worst turn one I've ever seen. Now on Ethan's turn, he shocks in his Steam Vents, then free casts a Mox Diamond, pitching Mana Confluence, and then casts Krark for a turn one Commander. Ethan will then pass the turn to Matt. Matt starts off with Cavern of Souls on Human. He will then free cast his Jeweled Lotus and then tap for one to cast Mana Vault. He will then use the mana from the Mana Vault to cast Hope of Gearper and a Phyrexian Revoker. After a bit of thinking, he decides to name Mana Vault with it. The turn is then passed to Cameron, and Cameron will start his turn off with a Chrome Mox, and he will imprint Reap underneath it. And after this, he will play his Forest, tap for two to cast Nature's Lore, then find a Tropical Island to the battlefield, and tap it to cast his Mystic Remora. A pretty great turn, not gonna lie. However, Ethan has a response to this Mystic Remora, Seeing as Cameron has a forest and Ethan has a mountain, Ethan will cast Mog Salvage, targeting Cody's Mana Crypt. Krark will trigger. For future reference, Ethan calls Tails on all of his flips. He will lose his first flip, but he can just recast it again, which he does. And he wins the flip this time, still targeting Cody's Mana Crypt, and the copy going after Matt's Jeweled Lotus. Now that that's out of the way, the Mystic Remora resolves, and Cameron will pass the turn to Cody. And now on Cody's turn, Cody will play Maze of Ith as his land for turn, and then tap his Volcanic Island for one to cast his own Mystic Remora, and Cameron will be able to draw from this. Cody then just passes the turn to Ethan, and Ethan will start his turn off with a basic island. He will then move to combat, and ultimately decide to swing two at Cameron. And after this, he'll pass the turn to Matt, who will take one damage to Mana Vault on his upkeep. And now without his Jeweled Lotus, Matt really doesn't have much to do other than the move to combat. He'll swing Hope of Gear for at Ethan, and his Phyrexian Revoker at Cameron and they both take the damage. And after that, he'll pass the turn to Cameron. And Cameron will start his turn by paying his Remora attacks. He then plays a Wooded Foothills as his land for turn. And after thinking it over a little bit, Cameron ultimately decides to just pass the turn to Cody, who will also pay his fish tax. And Cody will also play his own Tropical Island. And once again, just like Cameron, he'll just pass the turn. Ethan moves straight to combat again and swings two at Cameron. And then passes the turn to Matt. And Matt will take another damage to his Mana Vault on his upkeep. And unfortunately, he will miss another land drop, so he moves straight to combat, swinging two at Cameron again, and one at Ethan again. And of course, they will both take it. Matt will then pass the turn to Cameron, who, on his upkeep, lets his Mystic Remora die. He will then play a Spire Garden as his land for turn, and then decides it's time to cast Calamax. He'll then pass the turn to Cody after that, and Cody will pay for his fish tax again. He will then play Tapped Hollowed Fountain as land for turn, and then just pass his turn to Ethan. And Ethan will move straight to combat again, but not wanting to swing into a Calamax, swings two at Matt this time. He will then pass the turn to Matt, who will take another damage to his Mana Vault on his upkeep. Still missing land drops, unfortunately, Matt decides to start his turn off with a Rograk, Son of Rogoth. He will then move to combat again, this time swinging two at Ethan and one in the air at Cameron. And they'll both take it. Matt will then pass the turn to Cameron. 
and Cameron will start his turn off with a Cephalid Colosseum, and then move straight to combat, swinging Calamax at Ethan. Cameron will then pass the turn to Cody, who pays for his fish yet again, he really wants to keep this thing around, then plays an underground sea as land for turn, and then passes the turn to Ethan. Ethan will play an island as land for turn and cast Sakashima. But Cameron's not a big fan of two Krarks being on the battlefield, so he will Pyroblast the Sakashima, triggering Kalamax, and having both copies of Pyroblast counter Sakashima. And Cody will get to draw a card. Unfortunately, Ethan has no responses, so he'll just pass the turn to Matt, who will lose another life on his upkeep. And he starts his turn off with a Sacred Foundry, shocking it in. Finally, another land drop. He will then tap it for one white and cast an All Aid of Life's Bounty. He will then move to combat and swing for three at Cameron, who has no choice but to take the damage. Matt will then attempt to pass the turn, but Cameron will stop him on his end step to cast a Brainstorm, and Calamax will trigger. Cody will get to draw off his Remora, and Cameron will get two Brainstorms. Cameron puts two cards back, and then will fetch with his Wooded Foothills. He'll find a Volcanic Island to the battlefield, give his deck a good shuffle, and then let the second Brainstorm resolve. Cameron, now on his turn, will play a Scalding Tarn as land for turn. He'll then move to combat and swing six at Ethan. Now in his second main, and seeing as the counterspell decks are now tapped out, Cameron will cast Return of the Wild Speaker. Calamax will copy it, and Cameron will draw 14 cards, and Cody will also draw a card. Now moving to his end step, Cameron has to clean up and discard 10 cards. Cameron will then pass to Cody, who once again pays for the fish upkeep, unfortunately not making a land drop this time, so he has to discard a scapeshift and pass to Ethan. Ethan unfortunately has nothing to do on his own turn, so he just passes to Matt, who will take another damage on his upkeep. He then finds a Plains and plays it as land for turn. He's one step away from casting Winota. Matt will then tap for two and cast a Goblin Creator Maker. He will then move to combat and swing for four at Cameron, and one of those is lifelink. And Cameron will take it. And a little worried of what Cameron's going to do in this next turn cycle, Matt decides to sacrifice his Hope of Giraper. He will then pass the turn to Cameron. And Cameron will think for a little bit, then move straight to combat, swinging 7 at Ethan, putting him dangerously close to that 21. And unfortunately, Cameron's not able to cast any of his non-creature spells, and he will discard Force of Vigor and pass to Cody. And unfortunately, Cody isn't able to pay for his fish anymore, so he sacrifices it. He will then play a Wooded Foothills as land for turn, and then just pass the turn to Ethan. Ethan will start his turn off with his own Mystic Remora. Cody considers countering it with the Red Blast that he's had in his hand the entire game, but before anything's put on the stack, Ethan's able to convince Cody to not cast it because Cameron is a way bigger threat at the table right now. So, the fish resolves and Ethan will pass the turn to Matt. And Matt takes one to Mana Vault on his upkeep. He'll then move straight to combat once again and swing for five at Cameron, who will take it. And Matt will gain one life to lifelink. And now that we're on Matt's turn, Cameron's able to cast spells again, so Matt will try to pass and Cameron will stop him on his end step and cast an Intuition, and Calamax will trigger, copying it. And Ethan will get to draw a card off his Remora. And when both copies of Intuition are on the stack, Ethan will cast Swan Song, targeting the original, and then will flip a coin. Luckily, he wins the flip, makes a copy of Swan Song, and is able to counter the second one too. Unfortunately for Cameron, he has no responses to this, but he will get two 2-2 two, two birds. Now on Cameron's turn, Cameron will move straight to combat and swing Calamax at Ethan, and that is the easiest jump of my boy's life. Now in a second main phase, Cameron will fetch with Scalding Tarn and will find an island to the battlefield. Cameron will then tap out and cast a Nexus of Fate, which is an instant, so Calamax will trigger and copy it. And Ethan will draw a card off of his Remora. Once the original and the copy are on the stack, Ethan will attempt to remand the copy. Cameron will then free cast a Misdirection, pitching Force of Negation to change the target of Ethan's remand to Misdirection. But thank god Ethan was able to talk Cody out of that Red Elemental Blast, and Cody blasts the Misdirection. And Ethan will draw another card off the Remora. But there's still another problem, the original copy, because Calamax with an extra turn is still terrifying. And when the priority comes to Cody, and he sees nobody else can do anything, he decides it's time to mana drain it. Unfortunately, Cameron can't stop this, so it resolves, and Cody will have 7 mana at the beginning of his next main phase. And so, with his plan foiled, Cameron will then just have to pass the turn to Cody. But on his end step, Cody will fetch with his Wooded Foothills, and he'll find a Blood Crypt to the battlefield tapped. And still on end step, Cody will cast an Enlightened Tutor, and Ethan will draw a card. And he'll find an Underworld Breach to the top of his library. And after all of that, the turn will now be Cody's. He'll draw the Underworld Breach, and then get 7 mana on his main phase. He'll then tap Blood Crypt for a red, and then use one of his colorless to cast his Underworld Breach. And Ethan will draw a card with Mystic Remora. Cody will then cast a Demonic Tutor. Ethan will get to draw a card, and Cody will go find the final piece of his combo, Lion's Eye Diamond. 
He'll then cast the diamond. Ethan will get to draw another card. And now with the storm count of three, Cody shows the final piece of the combo, Brain Freeze. But it's not over yet, since Ethan is drawing a card every time he casts something, he could potentially interact with it. Cody will then have the first Brain Freeze, and all of its copies target Ethan. And Ethan will mill the top 12 cards of his library. Cody will then sacrifice Lion's Eye Diamond, discarding his hand and adding 3 blue mana to recast Brain Freeze from his graveyard, targeting Ethan once again. And Ethan will get to draw a card off Mystic Remora. Then mill the top 15 cards of his library. Cody will then recast Lion's Eye Diamond, exiling 3 cards, and Ethan will draw a card. Cody will then sacrifice Lion's Eye Diamond again, and then recast Brain Freeze, this time targeting himself with all the copies. And Ethan will draw a card. And after Cody mills all those cards, everyone sees that there's a Pact of Negation in there, and so he can stop any interaction Ethan can draw into. And so everybody decides to just concede, and today's winner is Cody and Kenrith. Welcome to the end of the video. What did you guys think? I always love seeing the Brain Freeze Underworld Breach combo go off, because I used to play against it in Legacy when it was still legal. But man, imagine how that game would have been if Cameron actually managed to get those two extra turn spells off. If you guys enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Also, leave us a comment down below letting us know what you thought of the game. Also, don't forget to follow us on our social media pages. Links will be in the description along with the deck lists. But as always, you guys, have a smooth day.